Greetings, I am Herbert Erpadurp, and this is Ask a Herbert Erpadurp, with me, the derpiest of Herbert Erpadurps. I hope you are all well. Here's a World of Tanks KV-5 battle for you to watch while I talk. Lately, I've been trying to get ram kills with this tank, and in this battle you will see one being stolen from right in front of me. Let's get right into some questions. Midlands Airsoft says, Have you tried Armoured Warfare, mate? As Gurpy42 says, I have played before and made a video. I'd not been playing much lately, but I did try to play a quick game yesterday. I sat in queue for a really long time, something like 8 minutes. I figured it wasn't worth waiting any longer and went about my business. I will try again someday soon though. Seagull Productions asks, Ever played Men of War Assault Squad 2 or any other games in the series? I do have it on Steam, but I haven't played it yet. Apparently I bought it in December 2014. I have way too many games on Steam that I've just not played. I blame the Steam sales. My wallet just cringed hearing the words Steam sales. Cooper Hamlin asks, Why do the British like tea? And can you play some Verdun and build some resin 40k models so we can laugh at the quality of the resin? There was also some discussion about the fact that I'm not British but from Australia, which I found amusing. I am easily amused. Fucking Australia, cunt. That's what everybody who lives here sounds like. I have no idea why the British like tea. I feel there's a joke here, but I've got nothing. I have played Verdun before and I quite enjoyed it. I should give it another go. I remember the shooting being kind of challenging, in a good way. I would love to have a chuckle at some of the 40k resin, but I don't really want to give any of my money to Games Workshop. I like a laugh as much as the next guy, but giving huge wads of cash to GW for the privilege just doesn't appeal to me. I do have a Tau army for 40k that I've not really paid attention to for years. Actually, to be fair, I had a set of Crude Hounds in fine casts that were really quite good. I think that was more luck than actual quality of casting there though. Gurpy42 asks, What is the best model you put together in terms of quality? Now that is actually a tricky question. The Rubicon T3485 has to be pretty high on my list. I find Malifaux plastic models to be really good too. It's really hard to pick just one that I think is best. The Rubicon Crusader was pretty good too, so well, I don't know. T3485 or Crusader, those are my top two picks at the moment. That could change at any moment, because I am a fickle, fickle man. Look at this shit that's about to happen. Look at that! I was robbed. Robbed, I tell you. Anyway. Gurpy also adds, when will you paint the Flames of War KV-5s? You know, KV-5 Master 8s. How do I pronounce that? Either way, I agree. I was actually thinking of painting them soon. They're on my desk right now, ready to be washed and primed. I was considering painting them with a camo pattern like my World of Tanks version has here in the video. Of course, it would fit better with the rest of my army if they were just playing Russian Green. Decisions, decisions. The Bear King says, What's your favourite game? At the moment, I would say it's War Thunder. I don't have the same variety of vehicles as I do in World of Tanks, but I'm really enjoying it. Of course, my favourite game does change fairly frequently. I tend to burn out on games if I play them too much. It's why I didn't play World of Tanks for a really long time and I haven't been playing World of Warships lately. I just burned out on them. Can Burke Erna says, Have you ever built aircraft? I suppose you enjoy AFVs more, as that is the majority of models you build. You're right, I do prefer armour, but I also like planes. The only one that I've built recently was the Sturmovik for Flames of War. I did build a lot of aircraft kits as a kid, mostly because they were pretty cheap and the local Kmart carried mostly plane kits. They disappeared over time with shifting interests while growing up and such. I remember having quite a few models of Lockheed Lightnings because I thought they were really interesting looking planes. I still do. I have actually been considering trying to get a plane or two in a scale suitable for bolt action, just for fun more than any need to actually use them in bolt action. Shellshock M3 suggested streaming as a solution for playing with subscribers. That's not a completely awful idea, though I do think it might also encounter similar scheduling issues. I always hear that consistency is best when streaming, so I would have to figure out a day to do it regularly. It is certainly worth considering. Dan Bramford says, I recommend you use a server reticle mod as you have quite a high ping on World of Tanks. It helps no end. I do have the server reticle settings enabled in World of Tanks. Does this perform differently in some way to mods? I don't generally bother keeping up with mods and what they do. Parker Burns asks, Why do you never use commander figures? You always go for the buttoned up look. Do you dislike painting figures? Painting figures isn't my favourite by any stretch, and that does have a little bit to do with it. Also, some crew figures just don't look that good particularly Battlefront's older metal ones, but mostly it's because I just prefer the way tanks look without any crew figures. I played some Rocket League the other night with my good friends Barnaby and Danny, and so now you can have one of those games as a background video. The game is quite fun and quick, and I think it's another good candidate for playing with subscribers. What do you guys think? 
Without actually opening the game to look at it, I think I can create custom matches with up to 8 players. That's 4 per side. I think it could be a lot of fun. Yes? No? Let me know in the comments below. Ethan Ton asks, How do you find Warlord models compared to other 28mm scale models from other companies such as Rubicon? To be fair, Warlord and Rubicon are the only companies whose 28mm scale models I've built so far, though I do have my eyes on some Trenchworks kits that look pretty cool. I think it's probably a little bit unfair to compare Warlord's resin and metal kits with Rubicon's plastic ones, though in that case Rubicon wins hands down. Warlord's plastic kits are much, much better than their resin ones, at least in my experience. I have a couple of their plastic vehicle kits coming up, still I think Rubicon's kits are a little bit better. If anyone has some suggestions for some really good 28mm scale manufacturers, I'd be really interested to hear them. Post in the comments section below. Kyle Mathers asks, Do you mainly do small scale modelling, 15mm and 28mm, or do you do 135th scale too? I do also build 135th scale, though very rarely. I have a few kits sitting around waiting to be built. The only problem is those models take up way more space when they're built, and they're not generally usable for games like Bolt Action or Flames of War. I have been thinking about building one of my 135th scale kits. It's hard to choose which one though. Kyle also asks, How long have you been modelling, and what was your first model? Good question. I probably started actually building kits when I was 9 or 10. I did have model trains before then, so I've been at it in some form for over 20 years. Though modelling did take a backseat during my late teens and early 20s when I was more interested in music and drinking and whatever else no good punks get up to. I don't remember what my first model kit was. Probably a cheap airfix plane from Kmart or something. In response to my Ship Simulator Extremes video, Seagull Productions says, I'm just waiting for Farm Simulator Extreme. Oh no, I'm not falling for that one again. I did play an awful game called Farm Machines Championship a while ago. It was rather awful. Don't buy it and don't play it. Your Silver Lining says, That game looks riveting, which I assume is dripping with sarcasm. Well done sinking that ship by the way. And Comrade Firefox adds, I was genuinely surprised you managed to get a ship to sink. Figured the game devs would have thought that too much fun. I totally agree. Very riveting. I was kind of surprised the ship actually sank. At first I didn't think it was, just that the engine stopped working because it wouldn't move. It does seem like an unusual bit of fun. It was probably something some rebel on the dev team slipped in at the last moment. I bet he was fired for that. Gaming with Jacob 342 says, Do I annoy you with all the comments I post on almost every video? Nope, I like comments. The more the merrier. Especially since most of the comments I get are fairly positive or funny. Of course I can remove garbage comments. Fortunately, I've only had to do so once. Robert Curry says, Hey Herb, I'm in the process of painting my Flames of War models, but I can't seem to get a flat coat of paint, but rather a more brushy pattern. Any tips to combat this? You may need to thin your paint a bit more. I found that to get a good brushed on coat, I'd have to do a few layers of rather thin paint, especially with lighter colours, though I would imagine your Shermans would be a dark green of some variety. Doing multiple thin coats does take longer, but it's about all I can think of to eliminate brush marks. It is one of the reasons I initially bought an airbrush. Ruddles says, I'm building a Tamiya SDKFZ222. I've never done a 135th scale kit before. Any tips? Also, I'm running out of questions. All these amazing people of yours are making up loads of questions and extinguishing ideas. God damn it. Also, a poop emoji is included. I've not built that specific kit, but what I would suggest is paying attention to the instructions, taking your time, and test fitting parts before gluing them. I think those are pretty good tips for any model. Ruddles also says, don't tap slash click read more. You can't tell me what to do. Oh, it's more poop, damn it. The funny thing is, this was caught by the spam filter. I almost didn't see it. Gruppenführer45 says, Awesome job. Any chance you can show the German Stuka? I'd like to buy it, so I'd love to see it built and painted. Cheers. I have been thinking about building aircraft lately, due to some of the earlier questions, and I think doing the Stuka is probably not a bad idea. I can't promise it will be done soon, but I should be able to get it painted up pretty quick. There's next to no assembly required for Flames of War aircraft, which should speed things up a little bit. Keep an eye out for it, I guess. Raiders has some painting-related questions. Presbyter answered fairly well. Personally, I like and use mostly Vallejo paints, but by no means am I loyal to that brand, though they do have some nice military-specific colours. I have also used Italery paint and Secret Weapon and Army paint to make some really nice washes. I might eventually use some of their colours too. I've also been interested in trying Minotaur paints lately. There isn't really an enormous difference between brands, and acrylics should mostly work together so you can mix and match as much as you want. Using an airbrush is an easy way to get highlights on models, though to be honest I don't quite understand the question. 
To make the actual colour, it can be a little bit tricky to get right. You can add a lighter colour to your base colour. If you mean applying the highlights, just figure out where the light will land on the model and add the lighter colour there. There are a lot of good tutorials on the subject on YouTube. And finally, there are many ways to make a tank dirty. You can literally water down brown paint colours until they're very, very thin. Or you could use pigments like Presbyter says. I've recently started using enamels for weathering and I really enjoy those. There are examples of such in some of my painting videos and a lot of tutorials on YouTube that should be easy to find. The tip about using an old toothbrush to flick dirt onto a model is a good one. You can use it to make blood splatters too. If you do have an airbrush, you can shoot air only through the airbrush at the old toothbrush with the dirt on it to make that application a little easier and more accurate. Gaming with Jacob 342 says, Have you done a Panzer Platoon? And if you haven't, can you make a video about them? You'll need to be more specific about which Panzer you mean. I've done videos on Panzer 5 and 6 platoons, those being Panther and Tiger. I have built Plastic Soldier Company Panzer 4s a long time ago, but that was before I was making videos. I have been thinking of getting a box of Panzer 3s in 15mm scale, and the German Rams Charge box for Flames of War someday, which does contain Panzer 4s. I will certainly make a video about that when I get it, but that's a plan for much later. Aura Storm says, IS-85 is a KV-85 hull with an IS turret. I'm pretty sure it's not. Looking at pictures of each tank, the front of the hull is similar, but the rear and engine deck are significantly different. Your Silver Lining says, Nice vid, though not sure what you will do with 15 IS-2s. I'll do whatever I want to. Nobody can stop me. I have 15 IS-2s. <laughs> Actually, I only have 12, but still. <laughs> James England says, Nice video. Wish they did a bigger scale though. Not a big fan of this side. I would love a plastic kit of one of these in 28mm scale. I'm sure there's a resin one available from Warlord, but I'm not convinced it would be any good. My hope is that Nias 2 is somewhere on Rubicon's to-do list. Or maybe another manufacturer makes a nice one. If anyone knows of one, please do let us know in the comments section below. I'm sure there are a few good choices in larger scales too, like 135th. Anyway, that's about it for now. As always, thank you to everybody for your questions. Keep them coming and I will continue to answer them. You can leave them in the comments section below or on Facebook or Twitter. The links for those are in the description. At the time I began writing answers for this video, I had just passed 800 subscribers, which is really cool. I just checked now and I have 822. That's awesome. I just want to say an extra thank you to everybody who's subscribed. I appreciate it. So, if you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe and check out some of my other videos. The three I've uploaded since the previous Ask a Herbert Herbert are visible on the screen now. Feel free to check them out if you've not already done so. I'll be back again next week, and also through the week, I guess. Thanks for watching. Farewell.